Hello, I'm Daniel Wiggins, and I'd like to share an idea with you. And that idea is including humanitarian assistance and disaster relief training into our theater security cooperation and partner building capacity missions. When a crisis occurs on a global scale, numerous interagency, multinational, and intergovernmental organizations respond to provide foreign humanitarian assistance. They do their best to synchronize their foreign humanitarian assistance efforts to address the crisis. But a lot of times, the host nation, the nation in which the crisis is occurring, has an inadequate emergency management system and can't respond appropriately. Incorporating humanitarian assistance and disaster relief into theater security cooperation and building partner capacity missions better prepares our partner nations in case a humanitarian crisis strikes them. A humanitarian crisis or disaster can strike anywhere at any time, and the U.S. has demonstrated a commitment to respond to those crises when needed. And even a humanitarian crisis can become a threat to our own national security. For example, consider in 2014 the Ebola epidemic in West Africa. In September 2014, the United Nations Security Council identified the Ebola epidemic as a threat to international peace and security. President Obama himself declared the Ebola epidemic in West Africa as a national security threat to the United States. U.S. government agencies responded to minimize the economic, social, and political impact, to improve and leverage global cooperation and partnership, and to strengthen the security of the region through healthcare-related operations. So during the response, United States government agencies partnered with the United Nations, the World Health Organization, international agencies, and local governments to counter the spread of the disease. U.S. military forces were tasked to set up a Joint Forces Command uh, in Liberia, as well as to set up an intermediate staging base to, to provide operational support for the humanitarian efforts. Military engineers built Ebola treatment facilities in the affected regions and improved local infrastructure to support health care operations. U.S. government agencies assisted with the recruitment and organization of medical personnel to meet the humanitarian assistance needs to provide medical care to Ebola victims. Also, U.S. military forces were tasked to establish a facility that could train 500 healthcare workers each week to promote safe patient care of Ebola victims. During operations, U.S. military personnel worked with intergovernmental agencies, international organizations, local governments, and non-governmental organizations to educate and care for Liberian citizens. U.S. military also was tasked to increase the Liberian government's capabilities to create conditions for a sustained epidemic response. The mission or the operation was called Operation United Assistance and it was a great success. The operation effectively contained the Ebola epidemic, kept the disease from spreading and kept from leading to a national or a globe, global pandemic. Operation United Assistance demonstrates how a synchronized global response can help decrease human suffering and a nation experience a crisis. And also it protected the rest of the world from the spread of the disease. But I think to myself, what, what else could have been done before the crisis for, to better prepare for a response? And this is where building capacity for partner nations comes into play. Humanitarian assistance and disaster relief training should be implemented into theater security cooperation and building partner capacity missions. Humanitarian assistance and disaster relief training and theater security cooperation and building partner capacity missions can better prepare our partner nations for humanitarian crisis before it strikes. I was speaking with a fellow military service member and this military service member happened to be in the Liberian Army. And he shed some light on the situation that made me understand our, our efforts in the relief response for the Ebola epidemic. But he said something that kind of surprised me. He said his country didn't have any national level protocol or no national level mechanism to respond to a national level emergency. And this kind of caught me off guard and it got me thinking. You know, the U.S. has a standing long-term security agreement or security cooperation agreement with the government of Liberia. We work with the government of Liberia to improve regional security and to fight terrorism. And, and I couldn't help but think, is one of our partner nations not having their own emergency response system not considered a security threat? In my mind it would be a, a security threat. And then I thought to myself, if we're their security partner, 
why had we not been able to help them prepare for emergency so that they would at least have some type of capability or mechanism to respond to humanitarian crisis or a national disaster? And then it hit me. Cooperation missions focus on external security threats or internal security threats like terrorism or insurgency. Building partner capacity didn't necessarily mean helping partner nations develop an emergency response protocol or build a capacity to respond to a disaster in their own borders. And I thought to myself, how many of our other partners might be in the same situation where they would be ill-prepared to respond to disaster within their own nation? Now, I have to say, the government of Liberia really did a great job under the circumstances. The Ebola response was a success in the end. <coughs> And the government of Liberia was able to le leverage the Ministry of Health to establish a national Ebola command center and a national level that acted as a national level emergency management center. The government of Liberia was able to incorporate multinational, multi organizational assets into one humanitarian assistance operations center. Civic, government, and military organizations acted in unison in a stronger force to contain the Ebola epidemic. But where next? Where will the next crisis occur? When will the next disaster occur? And who will it hit? Will it hit one of our current partners? The government of Liberia now has a humanitarian assistance and disaster relief capability and a capacity that they didn't have before the Ebola epidemic. But that was developed and done during the storm. And I think you would agree with me that it's best to be prepared for the storm before the storm hits. Learning from past experiences can help us shape our response in the future. That is why emergency preparedness should be part of the training we share with our partner nations. Incorporating humanitarian assistance and disaster relief training into our established theater security cooperation or building partner capacity missions can better prepare our partner nations in case a humanitarian crisis strikes them. Helping our partners build their own emergency response protocols, procedures, and capabilities to help them when the storm hits them is what a good secured partner should do. Thank you.